Guys, we are 48 hours away from Hong Kong being able to buy crypto. We're going to be speaking about this current Bitcoin pump, what tokens this may affect, and what are the next big trades we could possibly be taking for the week. What we're starting to see is we have a little push from Bitcoin. It is at a major resistance. It's at a very important trend that we want to break. We've had a very important weekly close on Bitcoin too. Now starting to reset the RSIs. Is it now time the bulls, uh, for the bulls to actually shine? We have Ethereum breaking the dominance chart to the upside. We have Ethereum breaking to the USDT pairing. And we have many of the altcoins that are linked with this whole Hong Kong thing that are starting to break all the trend lines. So we want to go through those coins. We're going to speak slightly about AI tokens as well. Uh, now is the time if the market wakes up, we need to be ready. But what we also realize is that dominance is sitting at the top. So what that means is if there is a Bitcoin explosion, it's going to be Bitcoin and it's going to be certain narratives. And then the rest of the market will catch up. We want to be early on those narratives. This is going to be a massive show. Happy Monday to you all. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Click, click. Have you heard the news? What? With this finger on the pulse, it's like Sheldon New. Click, click. When the sniper shoots, we got Sheldon on the charts, so we never lose. And then a sniper. Shop shooter with visor. And then a sniper. He marks the charts right. And then a sniper. He's calling the cycles. So enter the sniper. Click, click, click. Time to be dedicated. Sniper mode is activated. Explosions in the market are in target. And Sheldon demonstrates. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Master Sheldon, tell us all. We got Sheldon on the chart. So we never lose. Enter the sniper. Shop shooter with visor. Enter the sniper. He marks the charge right. Enter the sniper. He's calling the cycles. Enter the sniper. Uh -huh. Click, click. Enter the sniper. Well, Banter fam, happy Monday to you all. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Uh, a lot has happened. You know, we sat last night, we had a stream myself and Run, and uh, we spoke about possibly Bitcoin pushing hard towards the, the weekly close. And that's what we started to get. Now, just before I jump into the Bitcoin chart, a few things. The first thing is Banter Bubbles. Guys, we have Banter Bubbles. You can go to your app store and you can download Banter Bubbles. Now, it's incredible because you have all the bubbles. But what you are able to do is click on the bubble and there's a chat. And the whole purpose of that is if the token's moving, we want to know why it's moving. And ultimately, you can go in and see what's happening on any token. And there's a lot of new features that are coming. Secondly, what we have is we have the cohort number five ending this week of Sniper School. And then we go into two weeks break and we start the next one. So if you want to join Sniper School... <clears throat> We've had, I think, close to 20,000, even more, 25,000 registrations for Sniper School. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible. I'm so, so, so happy uh, with the way it's going and the way people are performing. We have David, you know, part of Sniper School, winning the Bible competition at the moment. It's definitely making a big change. I believe a lot of you guys already know what you're doing. You just needed a little bit of structure. And ultimately, that course is going to uh, do that for you. Now, remember, it is free. But the way you get it free is if you go below, you register for Sniper School. You have to be using one of our exchange links for Sniper School. May it be Bybit, uh, BitGet, OKX, Maxi, any of those. You need to put $100 or more that you get to trade with. And then you're going to put in your user ID. It will then verify and you'll get the whole course open. You get the live trading sessions, which have been going incredibly well every single day. Uh, and that's if you join Sniper School. Uh, anything else, Bybit competition nearly coming to the end. Amazing. Let's jump into it, guys. So the first thing let's quickly speak about is the shorter time frame with Bitcoin. We spoke about yesterday that we wanted to see the first higher high. And ultimately, what that was is breaking the 27,500. So shorter time frame, we started to get slightly bullish. And what you could see is many people that were shorting over here, uh, as soon as we broke through that level, we started to accelerate. So this is usually stop losses, you know, a short, small version of a short squeeze. And where we ended up pumping to is the major trend line. Now, guys, I spoke about $28,500 being a very important level to be getting through because that ultimately would be breaking the trend. Since we've made the high all the way down, if we break that trend, it now means we're going to indicate to go try chase the new highs. So what we first need to see within today, within tomorrow, is we want to see us continue this current run. Yes, we had a nice little push, but as things stand, 
we're still not bullish until we get through this trend. So at the, as things stand now, this could still be something like this at any moment. Now, if we do start a pullback from here, it's important that we hold certain levels. The levels we want to hold is all of this support over here. So this support is the zones we want to hold. So $27,000 is where we want to hold on any of these smaller um, pullbacks. Now, ultimately, your four hour, your one hour, some of the RSIs will be higher up. So if you see price starts to pull back and we hold 27,000 uh, and those RSIs get to the bottom, amazing. You know, this could be a great area to buy a support and obviously put a stop loss under the low. Now, these lows are critical because it was a really bullish pattern that played out by giving us a double bottom. So when it comes to a bullish pattern, this is good and it's starting to play out, uh, out well. Now, what we want to see is if there's a short-term pullback, I see two plays right now. If there's short-term pullback, we want to hold and ultimately then we want to break the trend. Okay, that's first scenario. Second scenario is from here we go. But ultimately, we want to get through this trend. Now, if we get through this trend, it's very important that we set in the next higher high. And that ultimately will be close to the $30,000 run. So if it will be from here straight away, we want this to go to $30,000. Then there can be a small pullback and we can attempt the big one, which we'll talk about in a sec. Okay. If there is the shorter term pullback now, where this comes here first and we break that trend, same thing. We want this to rally and get to $30,000. And as long as we hold these supports, which is the $25,000 area, we can attempt that at any moment. So right now, things are starting to shift slightly bullish. Now, what I want to do is I want to jump quickly to the, the weekly charts and remind you where we're at at the moment when it comes to the weekly. So firstly, we do have, let's put up my MA. There we go. We have held the, the, the 200 moving average, which is really good for us to see as support. And now we know very much that this weekly moving average is support. So you can use this whole run right now and basically rely on a simple uh, moving average to help you know that we're still bullish. At any moment we start closing below this, we start to get worried. Okay, now that's great because now we've seen, you know, you can literally put one indicator on your chart and you can know that we remain bullish or we're starting to get into a bearish trend. And the fact that we bounced like that was really good. Now, the reason why it was good is firstly, we have our stochastic RSI, which is starting to reset nicely. We're starting to get a little bit of a cross as things stand. Okay. Secondly on that, look how good that candle is. So what you always want to pay attention to is when we get to a critical level of support or a very important level to focus on, you want to pay attention to the candle because the candle is going to basically explain to you the, the story that's happening at the moment where we started off this aggressive pullbacks, not too strong, but a few weeks back, we started off these little bit of these pullbacks and ultimately we started to slow down. Volume started to slow down. Everything started to slow down, which means the bears have started short time frame getting exhausted at a very important support. And therefore you have volume tapering down and a little bit of volume comes into the market. All of a sudden you get a candle that absorbs. And all of this hard work in the last week was absorbed over literally a day or two within this week. So as things stand, this is a really good bullish candle. But what we obviously want to see within this week is a continuation of this. And if we continue, this will be really good, guys, because the last time we had this RSI at the bottom, Bitcoin was in the bottom phase. Bitcoin is literally sitting between fifteen dollars to $17,000 the last time we were in this area, the area over here. And if we decide to break this top trend, the one I just spoke about on the shorter time frames, and we do have the RSI decide to do a whole new push again to the upside, you know, this could be good. And it means one thing. It means we're going to go tempt these highs yet again. And I want to remind you that if this plays out and we do turn extremely bullish here and we decide to break that, if we get through that 31K, you're now starting to look at targets as in 36 to the $40,000 mark. So that's crazy. That's why you want to very much pay attention where we're at at the moment. So now we know weekly, all you have to worry about is literally 25K right now on the close is probably the most important uh, tool that you can use to say, should I make any big decisions with selling big parts of my portfolio or my longer term sort of view? It's literally one moving average. So if anyone could say, I don't know how to do crypto, like it's very simplified for you there. Now, what's very interesting is we're speaking about what are all these narratives going on and we've got a lot happening with the ordinals and all these different things happening uh, at the moment and uh, what's very interesting is again bitcoin dominance decided to spike up it spiked up strong so yesterday we started creating a little bit of a green candle and as soon as we got that bitcoin pump dominance went up and now it's sitting at the same thing so you have the bitcoin chart sitting at resistance 
and you have the dominance sitting at resistance. What's crazy about this is it's showing that if Bitcoin breaks that 28,500 and it gets released to go chase the 30K, it's very likely dominance is going to. And this ultimately will form quite a strong push from dominance. And this might end up as finally breaking out of this wedge or uh, this uh, range over here and sending it higher. And what I did notice is the 200 weekly moving average is sitting at 53%. Not only do we have that, we also have a horizontal, which shows that if this happens, this is going to be a serious push from Bitcoin. And why is it sitting here and forming a flag and cooling down, which we've never had before since we've entered this range? Do you see previously how we would go up there and get rejected and go up and get rejected? Guys, we're forming a flag here. So for me, there's some, some really, really uh, strong amount of strength being built with Bitcoin in this area. And for me, it's like, why? Because if we do decide to break this range, it's out of a two-year range, and it's going to send dominance to a level that I never thought it was going to get to for a long time. But the only way I see that happening is obviously we start looking at the higher areas of where Bitcoin can go. So this is a very, very, very important week because we get through there. Guys, imagine Bitcoin's 40K. Would any of you believe it? Chat in the comments. Like, would you believe if you opened your eyes next week at Bitcoin's 40,000, 45,000? You know, what would you say? It'll be absolutely, firstly, I think it will hit everyone by surprise. But secondly, why is it so strong right now? And why are we not releasing the altcoins? And the only reason for me why that's actually happening is we're still in phase one. And phase one is Bitcoin. They always say Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, these sort of things. If that's so, it means phase one. It means Bitcoin is not done just yet. And that's why we're not releasing and getting alt season just yet. But remember, in order to make money in alt season, you have to be in the alts before alt season. That's why never be afraid. If Bitcoin's running solo and Ethereum's running solo and the alts haven't moved yet, never be afraid to accumulate them then. Because at some point, they're going to go. They'll come next once those two big daddies are at a good place. So you need to always understand that that's still the right time to build. And I'm actually doing a show in the next two days on that alt season portfolio that I made. I'm doing the full update on all of them and where they're all at and what I've been buying and all of that, etc. So this is important to understand that. Now, the next thing that we're starting to see over here is we are seeing Ethereum. Not only Bitcoin, this is why I'm surprised that their dominance is not coming down because you have Ethereum breaking to the upside. Now, Ethereum, Bitcoin hasn't broken the wedge to the upside just yet, but Ethereum has. And what we're starting to do is we're starting to break out of this wedge over here. So this, for me, technically is already a breakout. And you can see what it did today is it already came down and had a small test. So as things stand, you know, it looks like Ethereum is going to go attempt these new highs. Now, what we want to see on this push from Ethereum is we want to see above $2,000. That will give us a daily high. This is from the, the previous high that we had when we had that big Ethereum push. Okay, so what we want to see from here is we want to see a continuation. So anyone that wants to trade Ethereum, I think this might be nice for you for some shorter term trades because ultimately you can put a stop loss under this daily candle over here. And ultimately from here, we should go attempt those highs. The first box you want to see is on this push up over here is we want to get above that $2,000 level mark, make a higher high. After that, obviously, it's the next big one. Okay, but who knows? Because this is the first flag we formed since breaking that $2,000 level, which was critical. Now, it's done something very similar to what Bitcoin did. Remember the first time we broke $25,000? We all like, woo! It's incredible. And then it came all the way back down to $23,000. Remember that. But what I still remember saying that day is that, guys, even though we're starting a pullback now, it was critical that we broke that wall. The fact that we broke that wall was very important. And all of a sudden, two weeks later, you got Bitcoin at 30 k and that's the same thing. Even though that we stopped randomly at $21,000 uh, to, uh, $2, for Ethereum, doesn't mean that that wall was not broken. It was a very important break for us to get through that, that $2,000 level. And if we decide to push up from here, I still see the same plan that we had from the beginning of the year. You're seeing Ethereum break out of this wedge over here and go to these major resistances here. And that ultimately for me is around the $2,400 to the $2,600 level for ETH. Now, not only do we have it uh, happening now, I think just before I show the next one, that's the trade, guys. The trade for me is the buy zones between $1,870 to $1,920. bucks. That's the entry for me, this little zone over here. And as things stand, I got to keep to what the chart's saying, and my TPs will be around $2,500. My stop loss will be under this previous daily low. But that would be the trade for me that I'd be taking if I wanted to trade Ethereum. 
Now, what we have over here, the reason why I'm saying if I wanted to trade, I'm holding it, guys. I'm holding long-term Ethereum. I believe uh, it's going to outperform Bitcoin. Um, next thing that's very interesting is the Ethereum dominance breaking on the weekly. Look at that. That's good. That's really, really, really good to see that break coming out over there. And I know we also have Ethereum to Bitcoin. Look at that. It's at the verge. So it's interesting because we have that dominance right at uh, the Bitcoin dominance right at resistance. And it looks like it wants to break. But then you have ETH sitting here and saying, whoa, I might ruin your party. We might still get the ultra on. We might still get these things before you think of those higher uh, 50%. Uh, what happens if I break to Bitcoin? And you can see we're literally sitting on resistance right now for ETH to Bitcoin. And this will be big. If we decide to break this, you know, you got to zoom out again. You got to be like, this has been accumulating for a while. And if this decides to break out of these ranges, you all of a sudden start going back to way, 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 way back targets of all the way to the, the 2017, 2018 run. And that's showing quite a bit of growth of up to, you know, 60, 70% outgrowth uh, over Bitcoin. So that's a really, really, really big one to focus on. Now, let's go to the next uh, important charts that I want to speak about. So quick update on AI. I gave these calls. Uh, our GRT is flying. There was our entry over there. If it does still go there, entry is still valid. Um, but for those who are holding GRT, uh, I think this is good. The market's looking good. Uh, the alts are looking good at the moment. So I think this hold on strong only by if we're back in those zones. But that's looking amazing. Uh, when it comes to our AI tokens, just popping out the box. Yesterday was a good buy, but singularity, again, if it comes anywhere between 28 cents uh, and the 30 cent mark, I'm building a little bit of a spot position. I think AI is going to run together. FET is literally in the top of the zone now. So if you want any AI, I'll probably do two to three AI tokens, guys. I wouldn't just count out the narrative. If I'm building um, over time within crypto, I want to have a piece of the pie in each of them because we don't know which one's going to spark the next run and which one's just going to run just next. So I'll probably go around three, maybe five AI tokens, smaller part of my portfolio, but I'll definitely be invested. So this is one that for me personally upload, uh, um, uh, buying, um, and this one's at the top of the box over here. Stop losses are all below these trends over here. Uh, just quick updates on these. This one we did really well. I think you should at least be 30% up on this one. No buys there at the moment. No buys on render. And no buys on Ocean. It's close. So this one probably in the later on the week we'll, we'll maybe be buying. Uh, GRT is good and ARPA is cool. Now, I want to speak about these quickly. So if you have a look over here, these are the tokens that are possibly going to be uh, available within the, the Hong Kong. Okay, these, these coins over here. So pay attention to all of these. And what I like about it is I see a lot of L1s. Now, we've been waiting the whole year for L1 run. Um, but here I'm seeing a lot of them. So these are all the coins that are possibly going to be available for them to buy. So you have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, you have Litecoin, which we spoke about. I'll go through that shortly. Bitcoin Cash, Polkadot, Solana, Cardano, uh, AVAX, Matic, and Chainlink. Now, if you go into these tokens over here, what's quite interesting is they're all starting to break some daily trends because they've all been accumulating over some time. And uh, pay attention that firstly, they are at great levels when it comes to higher time frame dollar cost zones. But they are starting to break some daily trends, which is really good. So you got dot breaking trend. You look at, there we go. You got Litecoin about to break daily trend. So if you're looking for coins to trade, focus on these and make sure you have these in the long term. I've been speaking about this to accumulate for the long term for a while, guys. To accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. And this might be the time that they all start to run. So you have Litecoin breaking. We got the buys over there. So well done to those. Uh, you have Chainlink breaking. Now, what I like about Chainlink is yet again, it's come to the bottom of the range. This thing's been accumulating so well over the last few months. Uh, and again, we're coming to the bottom of the range and we're breaking trend. And if it repeats what it's done for the last while, is from here, we could possibly have a run to the, the 9 to $10 mark. If not, break that. If you end up getting a buy at this bottom range, guys, I'll definitely, no financial advice, but for my own self, I definitely buy a, a chain link in the bottom of these ranges for a longer term position. Because at some point, it's going to break out of this range. It's respecting these lows so much. There's a lot of accumulating happening and a lot of good volume at the bottom. But this goes there. Amazing. You're 60, 70, 80% up. It breaks that. All of a sudden, you got yourself an entry that can go up to $20, $30, $40, $40 maybe even back to all-time highs. you got to remember that's where we're at. So Chainlink, definite. Uh, we have Bitcoin Cash also breaking daily trend. At the bottom of the range on the weekly, 
If we close above there today, you can see over here, daily trend break. So Bitcoin Cash, looking good. Cardano, broken trend on support. Great at the moment. So guys, you know, we always speak about your portfolios where you're going to have your, your low risk, your medium risk, your high risk, all these sort of things, okay? A lot of these tokens fall under medium risk. So I would make sure I have a lot of these old ones and I'm ready for them because this might be the time for them to actually shine and get uh, moving the way we've been waiting for all of that to happen. Now, uh, let's just go back in here and let's just make sure I have my uh, tokens, 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 Chinese tokens. There we go. Okay, guys, so these are not going to be open for Hong Kong, but we think they might run with the narrative, these Chinese tokens. So the first one we have here is CFX. So if you have a look over here, we have an inverse head and shoulders on the daily. And what you want to pay attention to is this daily trend over here. If we close above 34 cents at any moment, I think this can rally, guys. Very volatile token. All of these tokens would probably fall under 5 to maybe 10% of my portfolio. And there would more be trading tokens, like swing trading, like where you'd hold for a month or hold for two, three weeks. All depends on how fast they accelerate because these tokens do accelerate quickly when they break critical levels. So CFX is one of the big ones to focus on. And I think just because of the whole narrative that it should run really good too. So pay attention to this area over here it's at a critical resistance we have an inverse head and shoulders and if it decides to break here it could easily go to the top of the range which is 60 70 percent so pay attention to that we have flamingo this one is doing good flm i have a buy zone here of 8.4 to the 8.6 cents mark and that will be a, a place to accumulate um, but ultimately if we break over here as we are now there's my stops uh, i think this goes to 618 and if you look at percentage-wise, 30%, 40%. We have file, not there yet. Pay attention to the daily break. So guys, remember what I'm saying here is we're looking at a possible push from Bitcoin that's going to be really aggressive and only coins that fall under a specific narrative will run with it for now. I'm hoping L1s go too, which, which, which definitely looks like they could. Um, but at least you, you're paying attracted, to, well, you, you're actually understanding uh, the narrative and you're not going to fall behind, which is big. So pay attention to this one over here. We have this token that's already gone. Uh, I don't know if I would play too much on it, but I just want to explain to you, look at the narrative. Look what happens when you buy the right token, the right narrative in a market that's going sideways. All of a sudden you have two, three days of this coin exploding. And if we see the percentages of what this has done, 72%. So do you see why you want to catch them on these daily breaker trends? Because this did have a daily trend. This had a great daily trend actually. And the moment it broke it is the moment it exploded. That's why I pay attention to all of these. We have Zill, also a Chinese token, breaking daily trend. If you wanted to enter here, amazing. Stop loss on a previous low. And I'm seeing this go uh, towards the 3.2 cents, you know, 40, 50%. And there's a few others. These I'll go through uh, later on within the week. Now, I have some short-term trades. We spoke about Solana. I'm going to speak out again. Solana's breaking a daily trend. We spoke about this yesterday. I'm putting a stop loss around 19.2. And I'm seeing this at least as a minimum go back to the top of the range, which is the 26 to $27. It's breaking to Bitcoin. It's breaking to the USDT. Uh, the RSIs are reset. So for me, any short-term trades I'm looking at the moment, I'm definitely looking at Solana. So Solana's, my entry zones are between $20 and basically $20.7. Uh, the next one, which is exploding, which we gave the buy, uh, was Injective Protocol. So Injective is on its way. Just put in a daily higher high. If there is any retests around $7 would be a dollar costing zone for me with the stop loss under these previous lows. But all everyone that got the buy is well done. I think from here, it makes its way up to the ranges of $9 to $10. And obviously, if it breaks that range, we have areas of $15, $16, and we'll work our way up as things go. So Injective's looking really good. The next one that's showing a lot of interest, and I think if you catch this trade, I think it's going to be a big one for you, is Super. So what we're seeing with super is we've obviously realized that there's been some crazy volume spikes that come out of nowhere at any point. And what basically happened was price moved very quickly. So they always tend to bring it back to come fill it. But now what we have is a great daily trend over here. And if we daily close anywhere above the 14 to 15 cent mark, I think we're going to unleash super. And from here, I'm looking at it as a minimum of just going back to the highs to go fill all of this imbalance here. And that alone, if you catch the trade itself, from here to there is 60%. So you want to be active, guys. You want to find the money is still here. You can see this token literally, I think it was two, three weeks ago, it literally pumped 76% in one day. 
So there's something's happening with Super and there's a lot of volume happening there at the moment. So I'm paying attention, like I said, to above the 14 to 15 cent daily close. And I'll be taking this trade as a swing trade, uh, low leverage and margin on it too. Uh, and my stops will just be under this daily candle. You know what I like about it is look how volume, you know, you can put trend lines on volume too. And you see over here, do you see how we're getting right near the edge over here? At any moment, there's going to be volume. And if we break this trend to the upside, the volume's coming to the upside. And that's the crazy thing. So this is another big one uh, that I want to pay attention to. Uh, any other, oof, this dominance, guys. I'm hoping ETH can help perform and get this dominance to the downside. Uh, any of these. Oh, guys, so these are the trades. Look at the trade we gave. This is the live session. So if you join Sniper School uh, and you become part of live uh, sessions, look at the trades we've been giving. This was the entries last week and they're ready for the short-term traders. A short-term TP was hidden. The trade that I gave you guys just now, that's daily. It's probably holding for the next two, three weeks. Um, but look how amazing and how great this has gone through. I think we gave a lighter trade as well. Let's hit TP2. So you can see how hard we work every day to get entries for the community uh, and to help and give you, give, give you a place to trade. Uh, and these are going incredibly well. Um, so guys, Let's focus on Bitcoin. We want to get a close above the $28,500 level on the daily. Once we're through that, we should attempt the 30K. Uh, dominance might break up for a while, but I think Ethereum is going to run with it. So for me, if you want long-term investment on Ethereum, I'll be dollar costing because you never know when it's going to just explode uh, at any moment. And then pay attention to these tokens over here, um, the ones we've been waiting for for a while. Uh, your Ethereum, your Litecoin, your Bitcoin Cash, Polkadot, Solana, they're all breaking daily trends at the moment, which is crazy. It's weird how dominance is looking so strong to the upside. We have all these tokens breaking daily trends. So pay attention to those. And then if you want to obviously play around, make sure that you do focus on, let's just get back over here. Uh, there we go. Um, focus on all these Chinese tokens to play around with. Now, guys, I'm not holding any of these long term, but I would definitely trade them if they're looking really good. Zill is one of my favorites and CFX is one of my favorites too. Um, but that's just for the trading. Guys, have an absolute fantastic day. Let's catch momentum. I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling amazing. Uh, let's see what happens today. Uh, and let's just keep making money and have, uh, I don't know, just a fantastic week of just killing it together. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you all on tomorrow's show. Much love, Adfam.